Chapter 23, Children and Adolescents, Part 1. It is often difficult to determine if a child's behavior indicates emotional problems. An emotional problem exists if a behavior manifests, is not appropriate for their age, deviates from cultural norms, or interferes with adaptive functioning. Intellectual Developmental Disorder, or IDD, has an onset prior to age 18 and is characterized by impairments in measured um, intellectual performance and adaptive skills across multiple domains. General intellectual functioning is measured by both clinical assessment and a person's performance on IQ tests. Adaptive functioning refers to a person's ability to adapt to requirements of activities of daily living and expectation of his or her age and cultural group. So 5% is thought to be genetic factors, and that may be inborn errors of metabolism, chromosomal defects, single gene abnormalities. Disruption of embryonic development is thought to be 30%. So that's toxicity due to alcohol and drug use, maternal toxicity, maternal illness or infection during pregnancy, complications during pregnancy. Pregnancy and prenatal factors is approximately 10%. So we have fetal malnutrition, viral or other infection during pregnancy, trauma, or complications during delivery that deprive the infant of oxygen and premature birth. General medical conditions that are acquired in infancy or childhood is approximately 5% of the predisposing factors for IDD. So that include infections such as meningitis, encephalitis, poisoning, insecticides, medication, lead are examples of that as well as physical trauma, such as head injuries, asphyxiation, hyperparexia. Predisposing factors to IDD continued. So our social, cultural, and other mental disorders is believed to be 15 to 20%. So deprivation of nutrients and social stimulation, impoverished environment associated with poor prenatal care, and inadequate nutrition, severe mental disorder, such as autism spectrum disorder. The extent of severity of IDD may be measured by the client's IQ level. Four levels have been delineated. So we have our mild, moderate, severe, and profound. Please reference your textbook, Table 23-1, to explain these four different levels. Assessment of IDD. So nurses must assess strengths as well as limitations to encourage clients to be as independent as possible. Knowledge regarding levels of independence and the performance of self-care activities is essential to the development of adequate plan and provision for nursing care. It's important to involve the family members in the plan and implementation of the care. The next few slides will go over nursing diagnosis. So nursing diagnosis and outcome identification for IDD so we have risk for injury related to altered physical mobility or aggressive behavior, self-care deficit related to altered physical mobility and, or lack of maturity, impaired verbal communication related to developmental alterations, impaired social interaction related to speech deficiencies or difficulty adhering to conventional social behavior, delayed growth and development related to isolation from significant others, inadequate environmental stimulation, genetic factors.
nursing diagnosis continued. So we have anxiety, mild to severe, related to hospitalization and absence of familiar surroundings. Defensive coping related to the feelings of power, power, powerlessness and the threat to self-esteem. Ineffective coping related to ineffective coping skills secondary to developmental delay. Outcomes for our IDD patients or our goals. So you would like the patient to remain safe, make sure they are able to care for themselves, make sure they are able to interact appropriately in a social manner, um, manage their stress levels and anxiety levels, as well as be able to take direction without becoming defensive. Planning the implementation of ID for IDD. The care plan should focus on risk for injury, self-care deficit, and paired verbal communication. So although the care plan is directed toward the individual client, it is essential that the family members and the primary care providers participate in ongoing care of the client with IDD. Make sure the families receive the following information about the patient. So the client's condition, their expectations, realistic expectations, and the client's potential, methods for modifying behavior, and any type of support or resources in the community. IDD evaluation. The evaluation care given to the client with IDD should reflect positive behavioral changes. Autism spectrum disorder. So autism spectrum disorder or ASD is characterized by a withdrawal of the client of the child into into self. Oh, oh God! And talking to his own person. Predisposing factors for ASD. Imaging studies have revealed a number of alterations in structure and function of the brain. Also, it is believed that neurotransmitters may um, be the cause of ASD. So are some genetic factors, familial association, chromosomal involvement, prenatal and perinatal influences. So you may have maternal asthma or allergies. So these are some factors that may be predisposing a person to developing ASD. Assessment for ASD. So you have your impaired social interaction. So these individuals have problems developing relationships. They show little lack of interacting with people or responding when people try to interact with them. You have impairment in communication and imaginative activity. So both verbal and nonverbal skills are affected for these individuals. And when it is a severe case of ASD, language can be totally absent. Or it could just be uh, a mature structure of language. Then we have our restricted activities and interests. So minor changes in the environment could prompt resistance in these individuals or agitation with uh, irritability. So our nursing diagnosis for our ASD patients, I have risk for self-mutilation um, related to neurological alterations, impaired social interactions related to an ability to trust and neurological alterations impaired verbal communication related to withdrawal into self, neurological alterations, disturbance in personal identity related to neurological alterations. So our outcomes and goals for ASD patients. So a priority is safety, so no self-harm, right? Then 
for staff members, they should be able to identify one staff member they develop a relationship with, that they trust, and that they feel that they are understood by. Lastly, the client should demonstrate behaviors that indicate he or she has begun separation in the visualization process. Planning implementation for ASD. So nursing interventions for the child with ASD are aimed at protecting the child from self-harm, improvement in social functioning, improvement in verbal communication, enhancement of personal identity, and our evaluation of care for the child with ASD reflects nursing actions that have been effective in achieving and establishing goals. Psychopharmacological interventions for ASD. So medications approved by FDA include aripiprazole as well as risperidone. Targeted by the following symptoms. So they're targeting the aggression, the deliberate self-injury, temper tantrums, and quickly changing moods. Doses are based on weight and response. Common side effects for risperidone include drowsiness, increased appetite, nasal congestion, fatigue, constipation, drooling, dizziness, weight gain. Common side effects for aripiprazole include sedation, fatigue, weight gain, vomiting, somnolence, and tremor.